Vastiari. Senator Smith. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Acting Deputy uh, President. Uh, I'm also pleased to speak this afternoon on the motion. The motion reads that the Abbott government's confused and chaotic approach to hate speech uh, provisions in the Racial Discrimina Discrimination Act 1974. And um, might I just uh, thank Senator Dastiari for his uh, calm and reflective comments in what is a very, very important debate. It's an important debate because it is easy. It is easy to drift into accusations and unpleasantness about people's motives. And right up front, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Senator Astiari's contribution because he refrained from that and pointed to the fact that senators like myself and others approach this issue with great sincerity. Before Senator, Senator Dastiari spoke, you know, I was inclined to talk about Labor's actions this afternoon being one of playing politics with this issue. Playing politics with the issue because it's not a secret. Within the coalition, there are various views amongst senators and members, myself included, where is the appropriate balance to be struck between free speech and protecting people from shameful and hurtful comments. It's a debate about where is the balance to be struck. I argue that, the, that where it is struck at the moment is not right, is inappropriate. And in a few moments, I'm going to share with you um, others that share my view who you would not expect to hear from. Julian Burnside, for example, Sarah Joseph, for example, but I'll come to that point in a moment. But it's important to say up front that my position is different from the government. So as a government senator, let me be clear what the government's position is. The Prime Minister and senior ministers regularly make strong statements condemning hate preachers and the poison they spread amongst the community. That is an undisputed fact. The government has introduced foreign fighters legislation that has included strong prohibitions against the advocation of terrorism. The Attorney General did announce on the 20th of February 2015 that the government would be providing nearly $18 million to combat the lies and propaganda that terrorist groups are, are spreading throughout our community and particularly online. This will empower the government and community members to directly challenge terrorist propaganda. Importantly, the Prime Minister also announced in February this year that the government will be taking strong action against hate preachers, including stronger prohibitions on vilifying, intimidating or inciting racial and religious hatred. These strong prohibitions, these strong prohibitions, initiatives of the government on hate speech will clamp down on organisations and individuals who breed hate and incite violence. The government, of course, is giving consideration for the criminalisation, for the criminalisation of this conduct, and it's important to note that the government is not considering amendments to Section 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act 1975, as, in its view, the RDA is a civil regime. So that is the position of the government. That is the position of the government. My position, of course, is slightly different, and I suspect that this is where we would have ended up if the consultation process, the very genuinely inspired consultation process of the government had been allowed to run its course. Where we would have ended up is a proposition that would have been to remove the words offend and insult. And why would we have ended up there, Mr Deputy uh, Acting President? Why would we have ended up there? Because prominent Australians, prominent Australians were already there. Human rights activists, lawyers, were already at that position. Were already at that position. So let me just share with you briefly what Justice Robert French had to say. Now that name will be familiar to you, Mr. Acting Deputy President, because he's a very, very esteemed West Australian uh, lawyer. He is, of course, now the Chief Justice of the High Court of this Commonwealth. Justice French said that. Uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in Brofo versus the Human Rights Equal Opportunity Commission. Mr. French, Justice French said, the lower registers of the preceding definitions in 18C, and in particular those of offend and insult, seem a long way removed from the mischief to which Article 4 of the CRED is directed. 
They are all, or they also seem a long way from some of the evils to which Part 2A of the RDA is directed, as described in the second reading speech. The now Chief Justice of the High Court previously said, before we engage on this debate, that where we have ended up with Senator Day, Senator Lionhelm, Senator Smith and Senator Bernardi's private senator's bill is a responsible position to be. That's compelling for me. I suspect in a more tempered debate it would be compelling for many Australians. Let me add to this, not someone I would regularly quote, Julian Burnside. What did Julian Burnside have to say? Of course, he's a prominent human rights lawyer. He has publicly said, the mere fact that you insult or offend someone probably should not of itself give rise to legal liability. My personal view is that 18C probably reached a bit far, so a bit of fine tuning would probably be okay, he says. The Australian Human Rights Commission itself said in its submission to the now abandoned consultation process about reforming 18C, it said its comment on the exposure draft of the Freedom of Speech repeal of Section 18 C Bill 2014 considered that the legislation could be clarified so that it more, more plainly reflects the way in which it has been interpreted in practice. And let me just add one more, one more supporter with the limited time that's available to me. The very respected human rights lawyer Sarah Joseph, who's the director of the Castan Centre for Human, human Rights Law at Monash University, she has said, the prohibitions on that which offends and insults, even on the basis of race, go too far. Feelings of offence and insult are not serious enough to justify restrictions on the human right to freedom of speech. It is true that the terms offence and, offense and insult have been interpreted so that they mean, they mean more than mere offence and insult. It is arguable that judicial interpretation has saved these provisions from actually breaching the right to free speech. However, the law should mean what it says. If offence and insult do not mean what they say, the prohibitions should go. I am not renowned for my patience, but on this issue I will be patient because I have every confidence that one by one senators in this place will realise the wisdom and the wiseness of this approach to free speech. I don't doubt for a second that there will be some roadblocks and people will try and make political mischief, but I'm confident that community opinion will change in the favour, in the direction of the private senator's bill that is sponsored by <coughs> Senators Day, Lyon, Helm, myself and Bernardi. Thank you much, Mr. Acting Deputy Thank President. You, uh, 